Hello, Center Point friends and family. It's me, Edna Wesley, back again to talk about our friend Jonah. But before we do that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us this story of Jonah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the opportunity to look into his life so that we can look into our life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your holy word that teaches us and ministers to us and and tells us things that we need for us. So God, I ask that you would minister to the heart of everyone listening today. Minister to their hearts, dear God, and show them what it is that they need to know about Jonah and about you as we continue to dig into your word. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Last time we were together, we laid the foundation. We talked about uh, the historical context of what was going on while the book of Jonah was going on. We learned the who, the when, and the why of the book. The who was God. We said he was the main character. He's mentioned 38 times in these 1,300 words. We talked about who Jonah was, that he was a Hebrew, a prophet, a man of God, the pagan sailors, the people of Nineveh, and of course, the great fish. The when is the 8th century. Israel is in a divided kingdom state, and the brutal, hated Assyrian empire is the world power. And the why, the why was Jonah's attitude when God told him, go this way, and the brother went that way. Why? He hated the people of Nineveh. They were bitter enemies of the Israelites, and Jonah was a Hebrew. The why was the reason that Jonah's missionary trip to tell the people to repent was a problem for him. And we're going to talk about why. Let's look inside the book and examine the lessons that we learn from our cast of characters. As we begin, there's an important question that I would like you to consider. How do you respond to the word and the will of God? How do you respond to the word and the will of God? The story opens, God speaks to Jonah and commissions him to go on a missionary trip to Nineveh, the great city of the Assyrian Empire, also Israel's bitter enemy. Jonah 1.1 says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim judgment against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away to Tarshish to escape from the presence of the Lord and his duty as a prophet. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenician trading cities. Now, as you look at this map <laughs> that, that you're going to see, I want you to focus on the landmarks that I give you, okay? This is a map of the Assyrian Empire, then and current day. Now, if you look at the current day side, the blue star is where Jonah starts out in Joppa. It's about 50 miles south of his hometown near Nazareth. God tells Jonah, go this way, Jonah. This is east toward Iraq on the common day, on the uh, current day map. The yellow star, which is Nineveh, about 500 miles east of Joppa. But instead of going this way to Nineveh, Jonah went this way, a thousand miles west. That's the orange arrow. But further, because my map wouldn't go any further, okay? So Jonah took off going this direction, as far as he could go, as far as anybody could imagine during that time. He ran away from God, I like to say, off the map. Now, God didn't stutter when he told Jonah which way to go. God wasn't confused. Jonah was confused. He boards a ship full of pagan sailors, and he goes down below and says, Now I need a nap. 
Well, guess what? The brother was nap, not going to nap long. He was going to wake up. Why is Jonah on the run in the opposite direction that God sent him? Is he afraid? Does he hate the Ninevites so much that he does obey God? Does Jonah really think that he has a choice? God said, go here, he goes there. He's a prophet. He's a man of God. Duh. Something's going on upstairs. Has he forgotten that the will of God is not an option? We find the answer at the beginning of chapter 4. Now, I know I'm jump, jumping ahead just a little bit, but you need to hear this. Jonah, chapter 4. But it greatly displeased Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still in my country? That is why I ran to Tarshish, because I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, great in loving kindness. And when sinners turn to you, you revoke the sentence of disaster against them. So in this verse, we find out that Jonah's trip was premeditated. He had a plan, he thought. He made up his mind before he left home that he was going to try and outrun God. Really, Jonah? Come on, man. Running away response to the word and the will of God because he was angry. Okay. And his anger, he showed his true colors through that anger. He's a prophet with a bad attitude. He's a bitter bigot. And he's got stinking thinking. Somebody should have told Jonah, you can run from God, but you can't hide. Pardon me, CP friends. <laughs> I should have taken this watch off, shouldn't I? So it wouldn't be ringing. Anyway, sorry. Somebody should have told Jonah that you can run, but you can't hide from God. Psalm 139 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans. Even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. God's response to Jonah was a display of his sovereign control over creation to bring about his will and his purpose. God shows his greatness by doing great things in Jonah chapter one. He told Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh because God had a great heart for that great city. Jonah disobeys, so God sends a great wind and a great storm to wake Jonah from his nap. There's great fear in the sailors and God appoints a great fish to swallow that brother because he couldn't get away from God. The pagan sailors on the ship pray to each of their individual pagan gods. They were praying for mercy. And then finally, they realized that it was Jonah's God, that he was different from their gods, and that Jonah was the culprit. So they went down in the hold of their ship, and they said, Jonah, wake up and tell us what's up. Your God is about to kill us. What do we do now? Jonah knew that this was God's work because he knew God. He said, the Lord God who made the sea and the dry land, right? That's what he told the sailors. So he knew that this wind and this storm was not just a fluke. He knew that God's hand was on that situation and that he needed to do something quick and drastic. So what did he do? He told the sailors, just kill me. Now this brother, I think, had a death wish because this is the first of three times in this very short book that he's going to tell God, just kill me, okay? Because in telling the sailors, he's telling God because he knows that it's God who sent the storm. 
But the sailors were afraid. And remember, these were pagan sailors, but they were afraid. And what did they do? While Jonah was saying, just kill me, they were praying to his God, asking for mercy. They tried to outrow the storm, but that didn't work. They kept praying. And finally, they gave in. And they said, okay, brother, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go now. So they tossed him over into the sea. The question I asked at the beginning was, how do you respond to the word and the will of God? Well, Jonah responded by not going in the right direction. He ended up on the ship, and now he's in the sea. The Bible says that Jonah is trapped in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights. But that's not the end of the story. We were all created by God for a purpose, his purpose. We are all on earth with an assignment from God to bring light into a dark world. Running from that assignment is really not an option if it's God's will. We all have a call on our life. And what separates us is how we respond to the call that we receive from God. God didn't create us to get saved, love the Lord, attend church on Sunday, enjoy praise and worship, go home, come back Sunday and do it all over again. That's not why we're here. We are here to do God's will. Maybe it's bringing your neighbor to Christ, or maybe it's working in the church. Maybe it's helping out at the food pantry. Maybe it's feeding the homeless. Maybe it's, in this time, volunteering at the local hospital if you can, or helping kids in school who are missing out on learning. Maybe it's the mission field in another country. Only you know that. And when you seek God, he will show that to you and tell you what his will is for your life. If you don't know, now's a good time. Now's a good time because we're all locked in. What better time than to spend this time that we're all at home building on your relationship with God, digging into his word and learning more about him and if you do that, and if you ask with your heart, sincerely, then God will direct your path. He will tell you the road that he wants you to go down. I love a quote that came from our pastor, and it says, don't waste the wait. Don't waste the wait. Seek God and ask him, where is your Nineveh? Where does God want you to go? The book of Jonah is a powerful lesson on compassion, purpose, and obedience. And we need to learn from Jonah his good things and his mistakes. And there are several things that I want to point out. First, there's a Jonah in every single one of us, okay? He's not alone. Many of us are like Jonah. And we all have a Nineveh. And the storm in our life will not subside until you say yes to God. Hiding, running away from God is not a solution because it's not an option. A storm can be an opportunity to witness about God's love in your life. And your course of action will either cause troubles or blessings with others. Let's break that down and look at each one of these. First of all, there's a Jonah in all of us, and we all have a Nineveh, and the storm won't subside until we say yes to God. When God called Jonah, he couldn't see beyond his own selfishness and his desire to punish the people in Ninevites because they were terrible people. How could God, a God of love, grace, and mercy, ask him to go save these terrible people? That's what Jonah was asking himself. Before Jonah could relay God's message, he had to be broken. God had to teach that brother some things, and he did. He had to learn something about the grace and mercy of God. Jonah was filled with pride and prejudice. He was a bigot, 
And he was disgusted with God's love for the people that he hated. Jonah didn't want those people to be saved. Those people that we don't want to have anything to do with. Jonah hated the Ninevites. He was angry with God for asking him to share the message of salvation with people that he hated. Can you relate to that? Number two, hiding or running away from God is not a solution. It's human nature to hide when we've done something wrong. And Jonah knew he had done something wrong. When Adam and Eve sinned, they hid from God. In the same way, Jonah tried to hide from God rather than fulfill his call from God. It's always better to run to God rather than from God because trying to avoid the Lord's call on your life when he says go and you don't want to, (laughs) it's an exercise in futility. It's not an option. You can run, but you can't hide. Number three, a storm is an opportunity to witness about God's love. God sends storms in our life to get our attention. He sends people to challenge us. And in this chapter, we find that he sent people to even help his rebellious prophet. He sent a pagan captain to wake up a prophet of God who was sleeping in the bottom of the ship. And then the pagans start praying to God. God loves us too much to let us run away from him. Now, many of us try, and we try sometimes for long periods of time, but guess what? He can outrun us, and he shows Jonah just that. Sometimes God has to discipline us and storms come and they keep working on us because God is working on us until we submit to him. The storm is an opportunity to introduce somebody to God, to tell them about the storm in your life that has caused you to draw closer to God. Fourth, your course of action will either cause trouble or blessings for others. Jonah's the reason that there's a storm. God sent it just for him. All the sailors were fearful. They threw their cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But because of Jonah's disobedience, the lives of people on the ship were in danger. But also because of Jonah's disobedience and the storm that God sent in his life, people worshiped God. The pagan sailors who had multiple gods, they recognized the power of the sovereign God who sent that storm, and they prayed to him for mercy. Jonah was God's prophet who should have been saving the lost. But guess what? The lost ended up saving God's prophet. It's never too soon or too late to stop running from God, and to know that he is there for you no matter what storm you might be going through. I'll see you next time as we continue in the book of Jonah, chapter 2. Don't miss it. A lot of good stuff's going to happen. Bye.